everybody, welcome to another tutorial by Design From Within, also Modix Tutorials. This is a website that will um, that I'm developing and should be there very soon. What we're going to do today, um, by the way, visit my website designfromwithin.com and this is the new layout I've been working on. What we're working on today is adaptive web design with Modix. Uh, we're going to use Modix boilerplate from Ansel Hanneman and the Inuit CSS system to create an adaptive web layout in Modix. Um, and what is an adaptive web design? Uh, let me show you. This is our website. As you can see, it has main content with a page wide area and then three columns, each with three uh, elements and then below it another three elements and a footer. Watch what happens when I uh, lessen the width of the view it will slide nicely everything will change and the layout will stay the same until a certain point the color will change i added this and as you can see now there are two columns instead of three and everything still looks really nicely layout everything looks nice and it works it's flexible it's adaptive finally when you really make it small for instance like uh, an iphone or an android phone everything will be put nicely below each other and the font size will be a little bit larger to change the readability of the design. So this is what we're going to create in Modix using Modix boilerplate and Inuit CSS. Okay, first let me show you a little bit about adaptive or flexible web design. Uh, where does the idea come from? Well, uh, the days that we start with a nine, 960 pixel uh, layout in Photoshop are long gone. If you're still thinking that every website has 960 pixels with and then everything is fine, I'm sorry to say, please uh, read some more stuff. I'm going to show you some links because the web is changing and you need to be flexible or adaptive. It started a little bit, well, probably not started, but it's good start is uh, a list apart great website and they posted an article in 2010 uh, responsive web design it's by Ethan Marcotte it's a great great developer um, please read this it's, uh, I'll put the link at the post it's a really really good article uh, about how we should change our websites according to the size of the screen how to be flexible responsive to the, 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 the situation um, their example is is, uh, is, is this one, um, and I think this side, yes, uh, look, uh, look what happens, uh, the side now is a bit wide, if I make it smaller everything changes, and if I make it really small the whole layout changes of the website, as you can see, and that's what the he means with flexible, uh, responsive web design, so it started a little bit with that, uh, another article is uh, by Jeffrey Zeltman. It's actually a video. It's uh, really recently, 13 days ago. I watched this. I was blown away. Of course, you probably know Jeffrey Zeltman. Uh, if you don't, please Google him. Look everything and read everything he ever did because he's a brilliant guy. He uh, had a speech at Codeworks. It's a, I really um, suggest you look at it. It's a really nice speech. He talks about how the web is changing and uh, how we should work uh, what are the standards HTML, CSS3, responsive web design everything another one I've been reading I just bought the book uh, adaptive web design um, it's also brilliant uh, it has a lot more than I am touching on today uh, it's a really good something to read so um, please read it it's really good uh, I really uh, advise you to do that Okay, uh, what are we using? We're using Modix, of course, um, and we're using the excellent Modix boilerplate from Ansel Hanneman. Uh, it's here on GitHub. You can just click on download and uh, I'll show you how to use it. What we'll also be using is Inuit. Uh, it's from czwizardy.com, Inuit CSS. And it's a, it's a framework for CSS uh, and I really like it. I'll, I'll show you why. Uh, it uses, if you see the demo, uh, it uses a nice grid and if I make the screen smaller uh, you see everything still looks nice it, it, it's really nicely flexible everything changes so it's it's a good framework it's a good start okay 
uh, let's get started. Uh, what I have here is a ModX website just installed on my local host. I called it Adaptive. There's nothing in it as you can see and I've got a clean install. I haven't done anything to it yet. It's just a fresh install of ModX Revolution 2.1.3. Okay, so we have a fresh Modix installation, or you have your existing website, of course. This will be a little bit harder then, but it's just try it locally first, maybe. Um, next, go to uh, GitHub, smooth-graphics, modix-boilerplate. Uh, this is a really nice startup for your Modix projects. It's designed by Ansel Hanneman, really great guy who's, uh, who's designing or developing this. Uh, just click on downloads and download the zip file. I already did this, so uh, I, uh, I'll show it here. Uh, here's, the, here's the file, you get this download. I put it in my website file, as you can see here, this is the website, a fresh install. So I'll extract it. I can throw away the zip. And inside the file you'll see this. Um, as you can see, it's an assets folder and a lot of other files. First thing you need to do is go to into your assets folder, into templates, and here you can make a selection. There are several layouts for this template. Uh, we're going to use the Inuit grid. It's a 12 uh, row grid that's really nice and flexible. There's also a fluid gri grid if you want to use that, and a more tradi traditional 978 pixel grid, which is also really nice. Or you can just leave it default. But what we need to do is to open the main Inuit grid, select all, copy, go one uh, back one folder up, open the main, and simply paste and replace everything. Just replace the files. So now we have the files that were in the inside the Inuit grid file in in our main file. That's it. Uh, go up again until you're in this folder, the, asset, the Multix boilerplate folder with the assets folder and all the other icons. Um, this is the default Multix icon, <laughs> you can change it to your website of course, but we're not going to bother with that right now. Copy all of it, go to your website, this is mine, it's in a WAMP folder and I called it Adaptive. As you can see there's already an assets folder and everything, simply paste it in and replace everything. Okay, so now we have our boilerplate installed, or at least copied, to our localhost website. Um, now that we've done this, if you check out the assets folder, templates, main, this is our template. You have a CSS, a JavaScript folder, a PyHTC, this is for uh, Internet Explorer 6 or 7 uh, to have CSS free effects, it's really useful. Um, let's open our header file. And let's open as well our template file. And finally, let's open our footer file. Let's examine it a little bit. Uh, I won't do this in detail because there are other tutorials about this. This is the boilerplate. It's a lot of useful Modix things. As you can see, there are a lot of Modix tags here. And it's already pre-filled. Everything works really nicely. Uh, so you can just start your projects with this. Um, this is the head, of course, with all kinds of nice stuff, but here actually starts your website, the header, and this is the start of your content. Next part is template, as you can see here, here it inserts the header as a snippet. There's the content of the website, and then there's the footer, which is here, this one. Uh, you can leave it default, it's fine. So the first thing we need to do is create a snippet called site header and a snippet site footer uh, with the content of these two elements. So let's do that. Let's go to our backend, our dashboard, click uh, elements, uh, new chunk. Sorry, I said snippet, I meant chunk. Um, create a site header chunk, uh, template header, I like to call it. You can call it whatever you want, of course. Open your header file, copy all, and simply paste it in and save. Okay, now we have a header chunk. We're gonna need another chunk, new chunk, 
Now open our footer, copy all of it, paste it in the chunk content, and call this uh, site footer, I believe is the name. Let me check. Yes, site footer. You can just copy the name of the file, call this site footer. Template footer. Save. Um, what sometimes happens, please check this, if you get a question mark somewhere in your template, if you open it again, I don't know why, it's, it's <laughs> that's in my system maybe, I'm not sure, if you scroll down, yeah, you get a question mark here. I don't know why that is, if somebody can tell me, please let me know. So remove the, <laughs> the question mark and do the same for the footer, because it will have the same thing. I really don't understand why this happens, but save it. There you go. All right, well, let's examine the code a little bit more because there's another file, site template, in which it calls the header, the content, and the footer. So let's copy this code. Let's go to our site template, elements templates, and our base template. And here's the default modex code. We don't need that anymore. Simply replace it with this content. Press save. Okay, let's clear our cache and refresh our site. You won't see anything because we don't have any content. So let's fix that. Um, let's go to uh, Google for Lorem. You'll go to the Lorem Ipsum website. It's really useful to get some default content. And I'm just going to copy some Latin text. I'm going to go to resources in the Modix Manager. Go to home. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to give this a nice title. Type in h1. Close the h1. Some nice title. Save. Now, and if we refresh, we now see our website, our title. As you can see, it's a bit weird. Um, this is because of the Inuit styles. Uh, Personally, I don't really like these, uh, but that's probably just my opinion. Uh, how to fix this? Let's do that first. Uh, go to our site, our code, assets, templates, main. Go to CSS, open your style, CSS. And right on top, you'll see this code, HTML and the color. Let's remove that one. And as well in the body, there's a text shadow added. I don't really like that one either. Let's remove that. And finally, scroll all the way down, remove this as well. Inside the media max width 720 pixels query, there's a body font size 0.75 amps. Remove that as well. Now save it. And if we now refresh, we should have some nice default code. Oh, there's one more I'd like to remove because we're using the Inuit style sheet. Uh, if you go up again to the style CSS, the basic style CSS. Scroll down a little bit, you'll see here an H1, the type. It's weird, I think it's a bug because it's the only one that's declared. Let's remove this one. Save it. Okay, and now the H1 is a bit smaller, but this is the default size for the Inuit styles. All right, next thing we're gonna need is a grid. In my example, I have a 12 column grid. The Inuit's default style is 16 columns. Um, this of course is a per personal preference, uh, whatever you want. I prefer 12 columns. Um, so let's go to Inuit CSS, CSS wizardy.com dash Inuit CSS and click here on the custom grid builder. You see here, give it a try. And here, instead of 16, I'm gonna do 12. I want <coughs> 17 <coughs> Sorry, 75 pixels and 20 pixels gutters. I think that uh, that's a nice grid. You can use any grid you want. You can grab an example or uh, maybe you just want uh, five grids or six. Depends on your project, of course. I think a 12 column grid is nice. Uh, and this is just a nice default layout. Some people might want to have a, have a bit of more gutter space. And then you might remove a little bit of the column space. Just play around with it. Well, I'm doing this 12, 75, 20 and grid me up. And now you get 
two grids you can download a fixed width in pixels or your M fluids I, I would suggest you use the fluid that's really nice so click on download fluid save it and once you have that one uh, copy it let me show you it's downloaded here so I'm gonna copy and let's paste it inside our code uh, open uh, let, let's see where shall I put it I'm putting it on the on the desktop first let me show you for a second so I have it here this is the download file I'll open it in notepad I'm gonna copy all the code then I'm gonna go to my files so this is my sites assets templates main CSS I'm gonna go to my Inuit CSS file I'm gonna open it in my code editor I'm gonna scroll down quite a bit until you see uh, grid it's quite a scroll actually uh, oh well oh I think I passed it <laughs> sorry grids here you see it grids and paste the code in so just download your grid you want I'm using a 12 pixels 12 column grid uh, and just paste it in where it says grid in this Inuit CSS file save it and now there's a problem because I changed my grid system uh, I, I had to be complicated the default is 16 and I want 12 so I'm gonna copy this code 12 because if you go to our header so this is the header file of our, our site, uh, this one, header, site header. Um, if you scroll down, you'll see here grid 16. I need that to be 12. Same time, same thing there. Uh, and in our main template, there's not anything like that. Neither is in the site footer. So I've changed that to 12 because I'm using a 12 column grid. Now I have to copy all of this code, code copy it. I'm gonna go to my backend again for modix elements chunks I'm gonna open site header I'm gonna copy all of it save paste it in as you can see grid 12 grid 12 save it and once again for some reason on my system it will add a question mark uh, please watch my other tutorial on dynamic HTML import to fix this all right now if I refresh the page some little thing has changed let's look at the code as you can see there's a 12 grid here and the grid has a width of 89 pixel not 89 percent or 89 and a little bit and if I make the screen smaller it still changes as you can see so this is already a good start all right let's add our structure as I showed you in my example this structure it's really easy um, the Inuit system works with grids if you open your Inuit CSS file and open the grid you just download it you can see here how it works it has grid 1 grid 2 grid 3 grid 4 and etc um, the default thing you have to know is grid 12 is the full width of the page so grid 6 is half width, width and grid 4 is one third of the page so that's what we're going to use we're going to use grid 4 copy let's go to our site template and below site header let's add a div with grid 4 alright to have a full width of a grid we need 12 so let's copy this and have three of them and another three so now we have six divs with a grid 4 class now we need to give them some contact information some content actually so I'm gonna go to my resources again I'm gonna go to the home page I'm gonna scroll down a bit actually I'm gonna get some new lorem text just because I like lorem generate some lorem ipsum some latin text just copy some of it you don't need a lot go back to your code again and just add a paragraph with that code 
and simply place a paragraph in each of your your divs. Okay. Now let's add one at the bottom because we probably will have a footer. And in this case, I'm going to make it the full width of the page. So I'm going to make it get grid 12. It's as easy as that. And I'm going to add another one on top. That's it. So we have a div with a grid of 12, a grid of 4, a grid of 4. Um, but please check because in our header, we, if you scroll down, you see already a grid 12 here. That's the start of our site and it's default content and main. So in our template, we don't need this first one because that's already declared. So remove it like that, save it. In my case, I don't need to upload it because I'm using localhost. Refresh our site. And if we now refresh, Oh, nothing changed, of course, because I need to add this template to my site. So copy it, everything, go to Elements, Templates, Base Template, replace this content with this content. Save it, clear our cache, and refresh. And now you can see we have our code inserted. Uh, it's a little bit strange here that my title is at the bottom. Let's go to our code. Um, I added my grids above my content, so that's not good. So let's cut the content and replace it with this paragraph on top. So now our main content will be in the full width div. Save it again. Copy all of it. Let's go to our manager. Go to elements, templates, base template, replace everything with your code, save it, clear your cache, press OK. And now you have a nice title, for six columns, and they are nicely changed. And when you go really small, you will see the font size be larger and everything is below each other. So that's good, that's a good start. But I also had this, when I made the text smaller, at first it will turn red and have two columns instead of three. Let me show you how I do this. Um, I go to my um, Inuit CSS again, the Inuit CSS style, and I'm gonna copy this one, grid six until four. Um, and I'm gonna scroll down all the way to the bottom. Scroll up a little bit again, you will see this. Um, uh, scroll up a little, quite a little bit actually. Let me see where it is. I'm losing it. Mobile. You'll see mobile. Um, where is mobile? Actually, I don't mean mobile. Scroll down until you see narrow. Narrow. And it says here, add media, minimal width of 721 pixels and a max width of 600, 960 pixels. What this means, if, if the screen is between 721 pixels and 960 pixels, use this code. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna paste the code in, we just copied, um, and I want, I'm gonna remove the grid five because I'm not needing that one. Um, a grid four is usually one third of the page. But when our page is too small, between this size, I want it to be half of the page. So I'm going to change the percentage from the grid 6 to the grid 4. So now when the screen width is small, between maybe an iPad for instance, 720 pixels and 960 pixels, a grid 4 class will behave like a grid 6 class. I'm going to save it. Let me show you what happens. I'm going to refresh the page, and when the page becomes smaller, now there are two columns, as you can see. And when the page becomes really small, this is default in the Inuit system, the font size becomes a little bit bigger, and everything is nicely placed above each other. So that's the system. Um, I hope you 
find this useful you can do really nice stuff with this um, if you go to my website designfromwithin.com um, and this is my test site this will be the new version I can show you a little bit I use the same technique if the screen goes smaller at first everything scales and after a while you'll see these two be next to each other and this one above it as you can see those were three three columns now there are two with one above it and if it becomes really small everything's placed nicely below each other all right uh, please visit me on designfromwithin.com and i hope you enjoyed this video tutorial thank you for watching